In this lesson, you will learn how to identify different types of lines and angles. Let's start by defining the different types of lines. We're going to begin with parallel lines. Now, parallel lines are those that lie in the same plane and never intersect one another. Now, take a look at the trapezoid on the left. Can you find any parallel lines? Now, another thing about parallel lines is that they're always the same distance apart. So when you look at this figure, you can see that line AB up here is parallel to line DC. They're always going to be the same distance apart, they lie in the same plane, and they will never ever intersect. Now let's define perpendicular lines. Perpendicular lines are lines that intersect each other at exactly 90 degrees, which is a right angle. Looking at the trapezoid again, you can see that line AD, which is going vertically here, intersects line DC at 90 degrees. That's what this little square means. So line AD is perpendicular to line DC in this figure. Now lastly, I want to define skew lines. Skew lines are two non-parallel lines that are in different planes and do not intersect. What I want to do is use the cube to show you skew lines. So let's look at the front of this cube, this left edge. We've got this line right here. We're going to label it AB. Now another line that you have in this cube goes diagonally back like this, and we'll label this one X, Y. Now if X, Y continued, right, it's coming forward at you, almost off the page because this is a 3D figure. And AB is in a different plane. It's going up and down. These two lines are not parallel, and they will never intersect, so you call them skew. Now let's talk about angles. And I'm going to scroll down, make some space, and we can talk about different types of angles. Now recall that angles are formed when you have lines intersecting, but you can also think about angles or the measure of a straight angle, such as a straight line. A straight line is an example, is an example of a straight angle. The measure of a straight line or a straight angle, right, this measure here, is always 180 degrees. Now what you can do, let's just say you drew another line in here, like so, okay? Let's just scroll down. Okay, so now you draw another line in here, and we've got two angles now. We've got the angle from here to here, and then we've got the angle that goes from the blue line to the left edge of the straight angle. Now you know the total angle measurement here, right, is 180 degrees because this is a straight angle on the bottom. Since we've divided, let's just Let's just erase these marks so it's easier to see. Since we've divided this into two different angles, we've got the angle here and the angle here. We know, let's call this one angle X, and we're going to call this one angle Y. X plus Y, all right, X degrees plus Y degrees must equal 180 degrees because as you can see, these two angles, when you add them together, make the straight angle, and we know the straight angle measures 180 degrees. A situation like this these two angles are called supplementary. And the definition of supplementary angles is that they combine together or sum together to a total of 180. Now you can have more than two angles in here that are uh, supplementary, right? So if you throw another angle in here, you've got three angles. But when you add them all up, let's just call this Z, when you add X, Y, and Z, you're still going to get 180 degrees. So supplementary angles are those that sum to 180 degrees. Now we can think about another class of angles. So what if you had an angle here, or a line here, or and then we're going to do another one straight up. So what you've got now is a right angle. And you know that right angles measure 90 degrees. Now what happens if you take this and you draw an intersecting ray here? Now what? You've got two different angles, right? You've got the angle in between here and here, and we're going to call this one A, and you've got the angle in between here and here, and we'll call this one B. Now because A and B occupy the space within this 90 degree angle, you know that the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B must equal 90 degrees. Now when you have this situation, two angles that sum to 90 degrees, these are called complementary Again, with supplementary, it doesn't matter if um, there are more angles in here. This could have five different angles inside this green 
right angle, but they will all sum to 90 degrees and they will be complementary. So that's the way to define complementary and supplementary. Something else I want to draw your attention to is that the angles don't need to be next to one another for them to be supplementary or complementary. And by next to one another, we're really talking about adjacent angles. The term adjacent means that the angle shares a common vertex and a common side. So what does that mean? A common vertex and a common side. Let's actually erase some of these extra marks we put in here. Okay? Let's just look at the red and the blue. Now the common vertex is right here between these two angles and the shared side or common side is this ray that goes above the line. So that means, right, if you had angle uh, X and Y, right, that X and Y are adjacent to one another because they share this common vertex and a common side. Also down here, angles A and B are um, adjacent angles because they share the common vertex right here and the common side right there. Lastly, you want to define something called vertical angles. Now vertical angles are opposite one another when two lines intersect. So here, we've got one line and we've got another. Now what do I mean by the vertical angles? They are opposite one another. So here's one angle, we'll label this A, and over here we're going to label this B. These are vertical angles because they're opposite each other when these two lines intersect. Now there's another pair of vertical angles here as well. You've got these two over here and we're going to label these X and Y. Something to know about vertical angles is that vertical angles are always equal to one another. So that means the measure of angle A is equal to the measure of angle B and the measure of angle Y is equal to the measure of angle X. So that's another helpful tip to know, especially when you have vertical angles. So always look for opportunities to see vertical angles when the opportunity arises because it's going to help you identify other angles um, and their measurement because you know that automatically they must be equal if they're vertical. So let's use the information that I've just shown you to solve some problems involving missing angle measurements. Here we have two different diagrams, A and B, and what you want to do is find the measure of the missing angles. So let's start with A. You see that an angle labeled 65 degrees is shown, then you've got B, A, and C, or A, B, and C, whatever you want to think of. So we have to find all of these measurements for these three different angles. So you're given 65. What do I notice? I notice that there are two lines. So I see two lines intersecting. I'm automatically going to be thinking vertical angles. Where is the opposite angle to 65? The opposite angle is angle A over here. You know that vertical angles are equal to one another, which means that angle A, or the measure of angle A, equals 65 degrees. So that means that A must be 65 degrees. So now we know this. We know that we've got 65 over here. Now we need to find B and C. Let's go in alphabetical order and find the measure of angle B next. So we already know that angle A is 65. Now I know I've got this straight line here. Remember, the angle measurement of a straight line angle is 180 degrees. So that means this, this span from here to here is 180. So that means that angle A plus angle B equals 180. So let's write that down. Measure of angle A plus degrees of angle B equals 180 because these two angles make up a straight line. We already know that A is 65. Now we want to find the missing value that adds up to 180. The missing value here is 115 degrees. So that means that angle B has a measure of 115 degrees. Now I have to find C. What's cool now is I know that I've got vertical angles still because I know that these two lines intersected and B is opposite angle C down here. Opposite angles are equal, so that means angle B equals angle C. If angle B equals 115 degrees, that means that the measurement of angle C must also be 115 degrees. And there's another way that you can think about this too, is that um, when you're comparing the 65 degree angle, with this blue line, again, you get that straight angle, which would have a total of 180. It's the same thing as what happens on the opposite side over here with angle A and B. With angle C plus 65 degrees, you have 115 plus 65. So we used vertical angles and supplementary angles to solve this. 
Now let's go over to B. In B, we want to find the measure of angle X. And how do I begin? Well, I notice here I've got this little square, which is telling me that the angle in between these two lines that I'm highlighting a little bit sloppily is 90 degrees. And so what that means is that 30 degrees, which is given, plus X degrees, whatever this missing angle is, must give me a total of 90 degrees because they fit inside this right angle. And if you recall, this is called complementary angles. So what's the missing value? 30 plus what number equals 90? Well, 30 plus 60 equals 90. So that means the missing angle measurement here is 60 degrees. In this lesson, you've learned more about parallel, perpendicular, and skew lines. And you've also learned how to take different types of angles and the information about them to help you solve problems where angle measurements are missing. Thanks for watching.